This video will demonstrate rapid extrication of a critical patient by three or more providers. Rapid extrication should only be performed when the patient's condition is critical. All other patients should be extricated using standard spinal immobilization procedures and techniques. Rapid extrication should be practiced in multiple scenarios, so the principles can be applied in the various situations you may encounter. After gaining access to the patient, the first provider, whenever possible, assumes a position behind the patient and begins manual stabilization of the patient's head and neck. The second provider assumes a position outside the doorway the patient will be extricated through and supports the patient's upper torso. Upon command from the first provider, the patient is moved into an upright sitting position if needed without pulling on the patient's head or neck. The third provider enters the vehicle from the opposite side of the patient and measures for and applies a properly sized cervical collar. After application of the cervical collar, the second provider, if not previously completed, opens the door the patient will be extricated through, while the third provider supports the patient's upper torso. The second provider controls and moves the patient's torso while the third provider controls and moves the patient's pelvis and legs. At no time should the patient's clothes be used to move the patient. The second provider will need to assume manual stabilization of the patient's head and neck from the first provider, while the first provider exits the vehicle and then resumes manual stabilization of the patient's head and neck. This transfer of stabilization is necessary because of the car's B post interfering with the first provider's arms and handhold. Upon command from the first provider, the patient is rotated in small increments so their back will be facing the door opening they will be extricated through. The patient should always be extricated from the vehicle head first whenever possible. During the move, the patient's lower extremities may need to be moved one leg at a time over the car's center console. Following command of the first provider, the rotation of the patient is continued until the patient's shoulders and hips are clear of the car's B post and their back and hips are square to the opening of the door. Once the patient has been positioned with their back to the door opening, a long backboard can be placed with the foot end of the board on the seat in line with the patient's pelvis and the head end of the board held by a provider. If there are only three providers, the head end of the board can be placed on a cot. Once the board is in place and upon command of the first provider, the patient is lowered onto the board and the board lowered until it is level with the car's seat. The second provider now places their hands on the side of the patient's chest, and the third provider places their hands on the side of the patient's pelvis. Upon command of the first provider, the patient is moved onto the board. During this process, the move may have to be stopped so the third provider can exit the vehicle and reposition themselves outside of the vehicle alongside of the board to complete the movement. The patient's movement is continued until their head is at the top of the board. Once the movement has been completed, the patient can be secured to the backboard and cot and moved to the ambulance for further treatment and transfer to the closest appropriate facility.